did something crazy so I'm taking a leap of faith I'm getting used to my hillbilly teeth uh, and I'm going to read you guys something at the end because I got super fucking sick again and I've been in my room and not enjoying India again and I realized something really major and I'm turning 30 and last year on my birthday I threw an art show and it was a lot of work and it was a lot of people and it was a lot of communication and I blew up my candles and I thought to myself that I, next year I want to be in Paris and then I joked I'm like I want to be alone in Paris and then when I was sitting in the depths of hell once again sick as a dog sick as a cat I realized that like I think my body was making me sick and like they say the cure to ADHD which I have um I really don't have we don't have we don't own this this anything um I have experienced symptoms of and so it was kind of the first time in a while that I could not move like I had to really sit with myself my bones hurt I could feel all of my bones i couldn't eat again i was barfing anything that i was putting in my stomach and then the veil was lifted because in the middle of the night i realized i'm like i think i need to leave india like i don't know how i'm gonna do it i like been here basically on scholarship and uh, <laughs> yeah so I told April in the morning and I was really afraid because I, she's been so generous and we have all these plans for the next month to do here and uh, she was like yeah I knew you had to leave I had a like basically a psychic vision like two days ago she was like, basically waiting for me to realize it myself so I'm going to Paris in a few days um, by myself and I'm pretty nervous, I've never really traveled alone, and I have literally had a twin since the womb, so, but it's time, I have to be challenged, I have, people, people do this, like, it's no big deal, um, so, yeah, I gotta be strong in my aura, and I told you guys, like, my one venture alone, even in India, I got followed, so, I'm, I'm imagining my aura is just so protected, and everything's gonna be wonderful, however, the bigger leap of faith is the fact that I pretty much spent all my money on just having somewhere to stay. So if you guys have been enjoying this channel at all and you want to support the croissant fund, I would really appreciate it like so much. Plus it's my birthday and it's a big birthday and I am a money charm. Any, I was just writing to somebody about this, but anyone that has invested money in me has seen it come back to them. So. You could try it out for yourselves and just know that it will be very, very deeply appreciated. I have a love exchange button on my website, but I'll also link it. But if you go to audioga.space and hit love exchange, uh, like seriously, like $5 would make a big difference. And I'm really surprised. I posted just on my Instagram asking for help and there people are like already showing up and and I think that's a great cosmic lesson of this all too, is like, I'm really having to learn to receive, I have to learn to ask for help, and I'm learning them big time. And as soon as I realized that, like my body started to rapidly get better, like the big scab on my lip like fell off, and my bones started to feel better, and and then I felt like I could go outside, and, and yeah, so I think sometimes like stillness, as much as I talk and, and preach about how important it is to sit in meditation, it's really hard for me to sit in pain. I'm like perpetually optimistic and I had to just be like, this fucking sucks. Like, I, I don't know what to do. It hurts, I'm uncomfortable. I can't even go to the doctors here. The doctor is like way down the hall. And I mean, kind of excited. I did lose some weight, which I know there's already been comments, but I also hold energy and I think some, um, people will relate if you're empathic, but you hold um, water and, and ama in Ayurveda, fat is called ama and um, 
it's actually a form of self-protection because if you're really sensitive, that means your neurons actually are, there's more lightning going on. And so they'll, they'll keep this sort of layer on them. And I think that's a big reason why when I'm kind of like, I feel more like me right now, body wise, um, except for other than being in hell. Uh, <laughs> And, and through none of that, I knew my body was not betraying me. I knew it was doing what it needed to do and making me just sit with myself. And I've been obsessed with France since I was little. My name is spelt weird. And SoCal, everyone says Jaime, because we're right by the border of Mexico. Um, but it's actually Jem, which is I love in French. And so when I was a kid, I used to like just rewatch Funny Face the movie with Audrey Hepburn in it and she goes to this she goes to Paris and and she wears all these gowns but more importantly she goes to this cafe this kind of like club where artists go and actually ends up being a little bit of a negative scene um she gets taken advantage of classic but that that was my big fascination she goes and she has this big dance number in the cafe and she goes to she really wants the reason she even decides to like model in France to even go to Paris in the movie spoiler is because she wants to meet this intellectual um and that's what I really am wanting to go to to France is to see the art and to just sit and write and and I'm I've got all this poetry and I had to go to a really really dark place and I posted a short um, of one of the poems that I wrote uh, just feeling like just so desperate and scared and like having to look at my own dark side uh, and but also feeling held and like there's angels the whole time and so I know that good always comes out of everything and I know that I'm a great alchemizer of pain and a lot of artists are but anyways, um, yeah, if you feel at all compelled, if you've enjoyed what I've been posting, uh, yeah, then then thank you. It would make a really big difference for me um, and be able to stay somewhere shitty or decent and to be able to actually go to museums and, and all that. Um, and I'm off caffeine, so I'm gonna actually try not to have a bunch of espresso, so, I just, but I do need to like, you know buy food <laughs> and i'm excited to be able to cook for myself but anyway so if you're interested i'm going to read this that i wrote and um if you care i write a lot on substack my substack name is is um mave wave m a like my right my book book name pen name and my music name is mave wave which is m a e v e wave dot substack I'll link that too, but so this is what I wrote. I've spent several days in the cave of my room in an ashram, a room upon first entering I wouldn't have suspected would ever be of any sort of comfort, remains a solace in the heat of the day in India after experiencing what the travelers called Delhi Belly. Only in my instance, my soul left my body and I landed on my two front teeth. Easily to say I've had better days. This evening, I needed a change of scenery. I'm a second story at the Organic Cafe, a place I frequented because the owner is kind and in the States, I'm used to baristas that seem to make their malice my problem and sure to make you think they know more bands than you, which is unlikely as I too use music to stroke my ego. <laughs> it's true. There's many small flies thinking my screen is the moon and when I look down, I quickly look up at first after the sight of my sorry pedicure. Yet it's all rather charming. Being somewhere that is never quiet and recycling doesn't exist. The Ganges, Ganges River is the holy container that keeps me knowing being uncomfortable is all for purpose. There's an ancient air here mixed with cow feces and a temple at every corner. I hear the cranking bells now as I sip on orange juice worried that tomorrow will leave me painfully. I finished the Kundalini training and the closest I felt to God was on the bathroom floor, sweating and bleeding when it was over. There's some chapters in life that you don't write, but you know you have to read. 
I'm realizing just how comfortable I've been in the bubble of my imagination and the comforts of being so close to the houses of my parents, thinking that the grass is greener wherever Americans aren't. Ignorant, yet not inaccurate. I had to go very far away from my mind's habitual loops and familiar streets to realize I haven't th thought much about myself at all for years. Always tagging along, creating collective spaces, serving others and making a reputation for being cooperative. Still rather inventive, but always worried that my work will be stolen or worried that it's never good enough to be seen. Plus, I'd rather create than advertise and there's got to be a business mind to set mindset to actually make it as an artist. I'd rather just create and destroy, start fires and watch them burn me, expecting nothing of anyone but myself, critical of no one but myself. I've been digging to find out why. I've never been on such a routine in the training. Yoga eat, yoga sleep, yoga yoga and yoga. All the places in the world to watch my habitual thought patterns where no, with nowhere to go no one to please. Many of the days I felt a bit jaded. There's many back home that have so many options they can't make a decision and find problems with everything. Thinking to myself, if I had that kind of financial backing, I'd have changed the world by now. It's not true. Being here, I see the mountain of privilege and all the distractions I let take me from my purpose. I wish often that someone could write very clearly where my time is best spent to uplift my life, my parents' lives, my future family's lives. It makes me sad that I decided to grow up quickly. I remember the day I gave my mom my baby blanket and said I needed to mature. I didn't. I should have enjoyed every moment, never feeling like I had to do anything. <laughs> Sorry. I remember when I had my mom sign a permission slip to get my first job before I was of legal working age. And before that, I remember taking responsibility for the emotional well-being of my sister. <sighs> then deciding on the late nights, my mom had to work that I was obviously the better fit to manage the household. <laughs> All energetically speaking, of course. No one li would listen to me anyways, just extra weight I carried. My yoga teachers kept rolling my shoulders back and trying to open my heart. The energetic became structural. All the way created a savior complex. Certainly my life could be like a fairy tale too. So I needed to take off my masks and tell me everything would be okay. Make me, make me their muse. And my life would be like Bridget Bardot in the south of France. I'd be sensual for existing. and could take care of baby animals until my last breath. Turns out no one has and no one will, just like no one did for my mother. She's a saint and that I am sure. Her love covered us always, although I didn't always see it, screaming at her on school nights. Desperate, she'd take the rage I felt inside away. We want our parents to be superhuman, but they're just as messy. I want to be a superhuman with super kundalini powers, but I'm just a mess, stuck in suffering and occasional bliss. I suppose the joy of life is being okay, then it won't ever be okay. There's not reason to hope. I'd rather just know and trust. I trust I won't pretend anymore. I don't wish my life were radically different. And yet I trust I am exactly where I am to be. Today I have. Tomorrow is never certain. Tomorrow I'd like to start over. And so that's what I wrote. And you're welcome to find it on Substack. And if you feel compelled at all to support me, it would, it would go a long way. So that's that for today. And I promise to post more yoga videos. And yeah, <laughs> take care. I don't know why I'm so just a feeler, but I am. And yeah, so I know I'm, I'm really excited to go to Paris. I'm really excited. And I'm gonna go to Bioritz at the end and um, find some surfing to do and sit on the beach so even if I can't live luxuriously there's always the beach and there's always my notebook so I know I will be happy um all right take care I don't know